Black Mirror is one of the most chilling shows around. Time after time, it's given us a glimpse into a warped future, where twisted technology is used in the most horrific ways imaginable. Unfortunately, lots of the cautionary tales from across the show's six seasons are already coming true today. From social credit scores to neural implants and manipulative AI, here's just a few of the Black Mirror technologies that are just around the corner. Now, Black Mirror has always been eerily accurate with its predictions, all the way back to the prophetic first episode. It was so close to the former UK Prime Minister's pig scandal that it's hard to believe it aired before the news broke. Then there was the hedonist fancy dress club, where it's claimed a bizarre incident occurred involving a young Cameron and a pig's head. It's very embarrassing, I should think, on a personal level for David Cameron to be at least accused of these things. Since then, Black Mirror has explored far-off futures as well as episodes set in the modern day. But of all of them, Nosedive is the episode that feels like it's the closest to home. Now, for a quick refresher, the episode is set in a world where everyone has what amounts to a social credit score, shown to everyone else through their phones. People move through their life rating each other based on their interactions. The higher your score is, the more popular you are and the more access you have in society. The system taints everything, from how people treat you to the cost of a home, all the way to your access to medical care. We follow Lacey, a struggling social climber who has years of hard work erased in a single day. The episode is satirizing a whole bunch of different parts of modern society. And one of the most clear things it's referencing though, is China's social credit system. So picture your life in a place where everything you do, what you buy, how you behave, is tracked. The government gives you a score, and the score is a measure of how trustworthy you are as a citizen and determines what you're allowed to do, like ever. Boarding a train, getting a mortgage, all goes back to this score. Introduced by local Chinese government agencies in the mid 2010s, the system gives people a score based on how good of a citizen they are. It began as a set of different private systems running alongside those created by communist authorities. One of these is Sesame Credit, a private system operated by one of Alibaba's subsidiaries. Using both the extended reach of the CCP and their tech company's hordes of data, Sesame Credit makes profiles on people based on their 300 million users' personal data. Buy something online, it impacts your score. Being late on a loan, negatively impacts your score. Parents buying diapers for their kids might get a little boost, but buying too many video games or anything else the authorities hate will lower your score. People with higher rankings get preferential treatment, like skipping the queue of the hospital. And disturbingly, this system is already in use on Chinese dating apps, where people can check each other's social credit scores on their profile. The state-operated system is even more dystopian, and it's incredibly similar to what happens in Nosedive. In the episode, we see Lacey get barred from traveling, and she gets singled out for her low score. This is already active in China, where over 23 million people have been blacklisted and can't use trains or get a flight under the social credit system. The other punishments are aimed at people's social standings and their ability to move up in society. Employers can look up people's scores and whether they're on a blacklist when they're choosing who to hire. Other jobs at the top of their industries and some government jobs are completely off limits for people with low scores, who get publicly shamed and outed as poor citizens. One student in 2018 found out that he'd been rejected from university because his dad had outstanding loans and a low social credit score. And a large part of any individual score is based on the people they spend time with. It's a system that will put in even more obstacles. And what we see in Black Mirror is clearly taken from this totalitarian system, but some of the other aspects of it are uniquely Western. The insertion of the credit system into everyday life has turned the whole of society into Instagram. The the world is designed to embody the Instagram aesthetic of corporate minimalism. And just like Instagram, everyone's pretending to live a blissful, perfect life, but under the surface, they're clearly miserable. The visible pressure and ratings turn nearly everyone into fake, inauthentic people, completely obsessed with their own appearance. It's implied that ratings matter more from people higher up, encouraging brown nosing and dishonest social climbing. But that also means the closer you are to the bottom, the harder it is to climb back up. And the character we meet with the lowest score is also the most honest, virtuous person in the entire story. So imagine how awful it would be to live in a world where everyone's obsessed with appearance and what they can personally gain from you. A world where your place in society is pretty much set in place, and the only way to get ahead is to suck up to people higher up the ladder. Of course, we don't really need to imagine that, we're living in it. The Instagramification of society has been set into motion. Governments and corporations already have the tools to make it a reality, and Nosedive's world is just a bit further along. As seen with Nosedive, the first episode in each season of Black Mirror is often the one that hits the closest to home. Season 2's first episode, Be Right Back, is another example of this. We're already seeing the AI revolution unfold. One of the most disturbing new ways that AI technology is being used is to impersonate actual people. Deepfakes have been around for a few years now, but in a very short amount of time, they've gotten far more realistic. On one side of the technology, you've got the scammers, like the recent Mr. B scam. 
where in a TikTok ad, a defaked Mr. Beast encourages his fans to get in on a new iPhone giveaway. The 10,000 lucky people will get an iPhone 15 Pro for just $2. Click the link below to claim yours now. To most of us, it's pretty obvious that this one isn't real. The blurriness and how unemotional and out of sync he is, and the fact that he wants people to go to the shady link, are all the obvious warning signs. But for Mr. Beast's audience, lots of which are children, it could easily fool them. With all the crazy stories about scammers convincing people with the most ridiculous stories, it isn't hard to believe people would fall for it. There have been other similar scams floating around as well, like a deep fake Joe Rogan getting people to buy supplements. Very well to increase testosterone by about 100 to 200 points. Well, look, that Alpha Grind product is all over TikTok. If you go to Amazon and you type in libido booster for men, you're going to find it right at the top. Or a fake Elon Musk ensnaring gullible crypto pros into sending scammers their Bitcoin. Everything is very simple. You invest your money in Bitcoin for TeslaTreeBot.net is our bot. But as disturbing as these scams might be, they're just the vanguard of a much larger looming problem. We've come far from just a few years ago, where Microsoft Sam and a still image were the best tools scammers could hope for. It'll be a couple of years before we're seeing truly sophisticated, convincing, mass-produced deepfakes. Then the floodgates will really be open. And it won't just be celebrities either. A targeted scam could steal the identities of the people you're closest to. With just a little bit of data about you, maybe a recording or a video of your loved ones, scammers will be able to defake their voices and what they look like. Then they can use social engineering to extort people out of their money or their personal information. It's a pattern that we're going to see a lot of, but what these scammers do will be a drop in the ocean compared to what the corporations are planning for this technology. And Be Right Back gives us a taste of what's going to come in typical Black Mirror fashion. The story involves a woman called Martha and her boyfriend Ash, who tragically dies in a car accident. Her friends sign up for a predatory AI company that lets people talk to an artificial version of their loved ones. At first, it's just text, then it leads to audio calls, and finally, they sell her a fully synthetic body for the AI to inhabit. It's a heart-wrenching episode made so much more impactful by how authentic and well-performed both of the main characters are. And it gets worse when you analyze what's been going on under the surface, like how the AI company exploited Ash's image and voice up some Martha throughout the episode. They use him to convince her to buy the synthetic body, playing off of her grief to line their pockets. Meanwhile, Martha is left in limbo, unable to let go with Ash's replica hanging around, but also unable to accept him as the real thing. However realistic the synthetic Ash might seem, he is still just a reflection of the real thing, a collection of speech patterns, impressions and memories designed to act like the real thing. We see him adapting himself constantly to Arthur's wishes, but it's never enough. You just can't replace people. You are not enough of him! You are nothing! You are nothing! But unfortunately, we're already seeing the beginning of this technology today. In 2022, Amazon announced that their Alexa smart wiretap device will soon be able to mimic the voice of loved ones and use it in day-to-day -day operation. And that's all from a voice recording of under a minute. In the demonstration, they show grandma's voice being used to tell a kid a bedtime story. But how about my courage? Ask the lion anxiously. You have plenty of courage, I am sure. While it's borderline creepy, it could be a useful tool for people coping with grief. The trouble is that we can't trust Amazon and other tech companies to use this responsibly. A cutscene from the episode features Martha running out of credit and needing to pay a subscription to get her replica boyfriend back. And when she drops her phone and loses contact with the AI earlier in the episode, it's like she's lost him all over again. And letting AI companies tamper with people's feelings like this is a nightmare that we need to stop. What is that? Ma! <laughs> But however disturbing and emotionally tough Be Right Back is, White Christmas is so much worse. The last episode of season 2 goes further than anyone before it, bringing us two equally chilling technologies. The first are the cookies, digitized copies of people that people in the real world have complete control over. And the time acceleration feature is truly terrifying, meaning you can simulate millions of years of torment for someone's coded consciousness. Lucky for us, it's one of Black Mirror's most far out concepts, and it's doubtful we'll see digital copies of our brains for a long time. What is a pressing issue though is the ability to block people like we see in White Christmas. Similar to an earlier season 1 episode, the characters live in a world where everyone has a sort of smartphone contact lens embedded in their eyes. It's a way for the idea of blocking someone to be translated into the real world. Their image and voice get replaced by grey static overlaid onto your vision. It even extends to photos of the person and their children as well. Then at the end, we see it applied globally to someone. They become unable to see anyone else and everyone sees them as a red blob. Everyone knows that anyone who's been blocked has been ostracized from society for their crimes. The blocked person becomes so dehumanized that you can easily imagine other people trying to hurt them on sight. We even see a man eyeing up the blocked character at the end, although we've got no idea what he's thinking. Getting blocked by someone online today can be crushing, but as technology invades more and more aspects of our life, it will only get worse. As augmented 
augmented reality or virtual reality catches on, how are they going to deal with this? Will they go the black mirror route of a grey blob superimposed on your vision? Or will they find another way, like a restraining order for what service people can join and what digital spaces they can go to? So far, Meta has a system where blocking someone stops them from appearing in front of you and from contacting them. The issue isn't with blocking itself though, you're obviously not entitled to be able to contact people regardless of how they feel about it. But the more present the technology is in our daily lives, the more being blocked by someone disrupts your entire life. The fact that it stops you from getting any kind of closure is disturbing. Black Mirror illustrates how this will affect people, leading them down a very dark path. But what's even worse, as shown at the end of the episode, is how whatever system controlling this could abuse it. Letting Meta or any other tech company or even the government control your perception is a dangerous precedent. Public perception changes as the wind blows. In a matter of months last year, investors who put their faith in companies like Meta lost millions. And since the tech-heavy S&P 500 makes up a large concentration of many retirement funds, it wasn't just shareholders who got burned. Working class people like you saw their 401ks lose over 23% in value due to inflation and economic uncertainty. But even when the media told us inflation was cooling, people were still making hardship withdrawals from their retirement funds at a record-setting rate. We probably can't trust what they have to say, but the CEOs of these companies, they know it's only up to us to survive moving forward. Forward, and my subscribers do too. They aren't waiting around for the next headline to destroy what they've built over the years. They're investing outside of the fear and greed binary with our long-term sponsors and Masterworks. Masterworks has cornered the market on contemporary art from legends like Picasso and Basquiat to new names like Banksy, Coors, and Kusama. Over 840,000 people are on the platform. And since over 6,000 of those have come straight from this channel, you guys can still skip the line and get your collection today. Use my special link in the description below. We already live in a world where your past and who you are is intimately linked with how people see you. Do one embarrassing or criminal thing, and unless somehow you get it scrubbed, which is pretty much impossible, it will always be on Google forever. With augmented reality, these things will become immediately apparent in the real world as well. It's doubtful we'll ever see Black Mirror style blocking in our lifetimes. But overlaid warnings or information isn't a big step. If the tech catches on, then it won't be long before you can see whatever info that's online just from looking at someone. The court of public opinion, already a much more powerful force, will have full reign, and you can see how dictators and authoritarian governments would jump on this. Once China can broadcast their citizens' social credit scores in plain view, why wouldn't they? An often forgotten part of how these societies keep their totalitarian order isn't through boots and guns, it's through social pressure, keeping people engaged in the system through shame and the threat of isolation and excommunication. Once they hit that button, that's it, you're locked out. End of conversation. You can't hear or speak to them, they can't hear or speak to you. Virtual blocking and the technology we've talked about is the next step in how this ostracization will be enforced. One of the most unique episodes of Black Mirror is Metalhead, both for its setting, its focus on action, and the fact that it's all shot in black and white. But despite being possibly the furthest episode from our real world, the technology in it is disturbingly real. The episode involves a post-apocalyptic scenario, presumably after some catastrophic war, autonomous AI-driven robotic killing machines left over from the past are common. They're everywhere in the world with Metalhead, lying dormant and waiting for something to trip their senses. It might seem like the kind of irony that only exists in fiction, man's best friend turned into his worst nightmare, but Black Mirror's robot dogs aren't far from what we can expect. Engineers are already taking inspiration from the natural world with good reason. Our planes look so much like birds because evolution spent hundreds of millions of years perfecting flight before we came along. Likewise, we're already seeing dog-shaped robots going around from Boston Dynamics, being used to go in parks and monitor people during COVID times. Let's keep Singapore healthy. For your own safety and for those around you, please stand at least one meter apart. Thank you. And there's already a few different designs we've seen in just the past couple of years. Ghost Robotics, a specialist engineering company, is currently designing and making the Vision 60, which looks incredibly similar to the robots in Metalhead. It might look a bit clunky, but it's still in development. It also hasn't stopped both the US and UK buying some for testing, as well as over 20 security and military companies. Of course, they've already put a gun on its back. Here you can see a specialist unmanned rifle attached with a range of 1.2 kilometers unveiled at a US Army trade show in October 2021. The robot itself can reportedly operate over for a 60 kilometer radius with three hours of battery life. And both of these stats are going to be improving significantly in the coming months and years. We won't see these being used in mass till they're worth less than how much armies value human life. Right now, with a price tag of $150,000, this won't happen yet, but it's coming soon. As are the software developments and breakthroughs which would make it far more effective. Also lacking is the artificial intelligence we see in Metalhead. Although with how fast AI is progressing, it probably won't be too long. If they can drive cars and write poetry, it won't be long before they 
they can walk and shoot as well. We might not see it being able to hack into cars or security systems like in Metalhead, but it will eventually be equipped with solar panels for remote charging and a general AI for autonomous operations. There's also talks about deploying these at the US's border with Mexico, and they've already been used as sentries by British armed forces. In some ways, this robot might even go beyond Metalhead. Ghost Robotics website boasts about their plans to enable these robots to swim. These aren't the only company racing to corner the killer robot market. Whilst Boston Dynamics have publicly condemned using their robots for violence, you can easily imagine their bomb disposal robot filling a different purpose with a few modifications. But as of now, two units have been given by the US to Ukraine to help with minesweeping. This is in no way an exhaustive list of the technologies that Black Mirror predicted, or the ones that have already gotten here. It's a testament to the imagination of Charlie Brooker and the other writers of the show for how many of their ideas have come true. But just because we have the technology, it doesn't mean we'll always use it in the ways Black Mirror predicts. Their universe and the characters often have far less concern for morality or empathy than we do. It's a warped reflection after rule, a black mirror, not a clear image of what the future will hold. But it's important that we have these conversations and these ideas now so that we can have some idea of what we need to avoid once we get there.